There is this ashwagandha study that figured out the exact dose needed to reduce cortisol and increase serotonin at the same time. Let me show you what they found and what that means for your supplement protocol. There's this one very specific tweak that the researchers made that has the potential to really increase ashwagandha benefits. Okay, so this is the study and in it, the researchers recruited adults between 21 and 54 years old who had mild to moderate levels of stress or anxiety. They were then split into two groups. One group got 500 milligrams of ashwagandha root extract that was standardized to 2.5% with thanolides, which are the main active compounds in it. And what's important is that they gave it along with 5 milligrams of piperine, which is a compound from black pepper that increases absorption. And then the other group got the placebo. Everyone took their capsules once per day at bedtime for 60 days. The researchers then measured a bunch of things before and after the trial, including perceived stress and anxiety levels, quality of life, cognitive performance, and biological markers like cortisol and serotonin. After the two months, the results were pretty clear. The people taking ashwagandha showed big improvements across the board. According to the paper, the PSS, GAD7, and QOL scores improved significantly in all the participants taking ashwagandha root extract compared to the placebo. So let's break that down. Stress scores dropped from about 20 to 11, so that's roughly a 46% reduction in perceived stress. Anxiety scores also dropped significantly while they stayed about the same in the placebo group and quality of life measures improved in every category. So physical, psychological and social well-being. But the most important thing is the biological data that back this up. The morning saliva cortisol levels dropped significantly and the researchers wrote ashwagandha root extract consumption was associated with a reduction in morning cortisol in 64% of participants compared to 24% in placebo. That means nearly two thirds of people had lower cortisol levels after taking ashwagandha for 60 days, even though the dose was moderate. More on that later. At the same time, their urinary serotonin levels also went up. Now, I personally have my problems with urine serotonin markers because it really just shows you how much you excrete and not how much is active in your brain. But it still makes sense because serotonin is a mood stabilizer and more serotonin usually means more even mood and less anxiety. On top of that, those taking ashwagandha perform better in multitasking, focus and reaction times. Basically, their brains work faster and they make decisions more efficiently. And just as important, there were no serious side effects. Blood tests, liver enzymes and kidney markers all stayed within normal ranges. The authors concluded the results of this study suggest that ashwagandha root extract with 2.5% with thanolides at 500 milligrams can effectively improve stress and anxiety by reducing cortisol and increasing serotonin. Now, what's interesting is the dose that they used. It is in line with a recent research review that concluded supplementation with 250 to 500 milligrams of ashwagandha extract daily for 4 to 13 weeks significantly decreased morning cortisol levels in adults experiencing higher stress levels. But this study also included two factors that made it unique. You see, many studies use a higher withanoloid content, sometimes up to 5%, which obviously means you need less extract. And in this study, they only used 2.5%. And this study also used 5 milligrams of piperine, which again is the compound from black pepper that can increase absorption. How much of a difference piperine makes is hard to say, but different with analyte contents can obviously skew the data. If you go by this study, then 2.5% of 500 milligrams equals 12.5 milligrams with analytes per day, which could mean you need more or less depending on how much you're taking right now. Before I talk about the other things that you need to keep in mind when taking ashwagandha, let's explain how exactly it affects your brain and nervous system. So ashwagandha is an adaptogen, so it helps the body adapt to stress. Instead of blocking stress entirely, adaptogens make you more resilient, so they balance hormones and support your nervous system. The withanolites in it work mainly through the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, so your HPA axis, which is the brain-body connection that controls how your body reacts to stress. When you're under chronic stress, your HPA axis stays activated. Your adrenal glands pump out cortisol, which over time can lead to fatigue, anxiety, insomnia, and even weight gain. 
Ashwagandha gently down regulates that stress response. It lowers cortisol, calms overactive nerves, and helps restore hormonal balance. Kind of like a natural shield that your body can develop after you're taking it for a few weeks. Now, if you're new to it, there are a few things that you need to know on how to take ashwagandha correctly. In terms of dosing, like I said before, most studies use 25 to 5% with thanolites and doses of 300 to 600 milligrams of root extract per day. Again, if you want to emulate the study we just talked about, you will need 12.5 milligrams of withanolite content per day. So adjust your dose based on your supplement percentage. In terms of when to take it, the participants took it at night, so right before they went to sleep, which might be ideal for sleep support. But if you want more stress reduction throughout the day, you can also take it earlier. Both ways can work, and it really depends on how your body reacts to it. You can take ashwagandha with or without food, but it's usually recommended to be taken with food just to minimize potential stomach upset. In terms of side effects, in most human trials, including this one, there were no serious side effects. Some people report mild stomach discomfort or sleepiness when they first start taking it, but the sleepiness is kind of the point, so I wouldn't even call it a side effect. But if you're taking medication for anxiety, blood pressure, or sleep, definitely talk to your doctor before adding it because it can enhance their effect or lead to interactions. Also, as with any adaptogen, reaction is highly individual and there are definitely non-responders out there. So if you don't get any benefits from ashwagandha, you can also try other adaptogens. I personally really like Bacopa monieri, which has proven stress reduction benefits as well. Even though we have a lot of data on these herbs, your reaction can always be different from someone else's, so no study can give you the whole picture. At the end of the day, you have to try it out for yourself and then see how you react. Also, if you're watching this because you suffer from chronic fatigue, burnout, or a related condition, make sure to check the description where I link my recovery program. It includes the exact protocol that I used to get my energy back after I crashed, and it's a step-by-step -step system that includes diet, supplements, nervous system support, and more. It can be done with or without adaptogens and helps you understand the root causes behind your fatigue and helps you avoid the most common beginner mistakes that can set people back years. For more info, just open the description. It will be listed under my programs.